Hey Mojoholics, I'm your host Rebecca, and in this 18th episode of Watch Mojo FAQ, our CEO and co-founder Ashkan Karbis Frushin joins me to discuss the methodology behind our lists and why your favorite didn't make it. Hey Mojoholics, welcome to Watch Mojo FAQ episode 18. We're almost coming to the end of season one of Watch Mojo FAQ, just a couple shows left. Welcome Ash. Welcome, Rebecca. Hey, guys. So we're 18. Does this mean we get to drink and are responsible for our bad decisions now? Yeah. What do you think's in here anyway? Uh, so last week, we told you that we were planning on talking about the video game show that we're planning on launching in 2015. And then we will discuss possible changes to this show and what's your mojo. But judging from some of the recurring comments, we will push that to next week. So let's start. Yeah. Uh, we published the third installment of Topics on comedy channels. And I know we talked about general feedback a couple weeks ago, but uh, you wanted to expand on the methodology. Yeah, so basically when uh, I was in LA and I heard the CEO of YouTube talk about their discoverability problem, at around the same time we saw the Mojoholics ask for top 10 movie critics, so we kind of put that together, said, oh my God, this could be a series, let's do it. But the, the big idea was really to focus on the most successful YouTube channels. That's the key word, successful. Uh, albeit successful uh, is, a, is a relative term. And the idea was, once we decided to do this, we said we're going to kind of deviate from our traditional formula for top tens. Yeah, like you see the host is a bit less scripted. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But we still felt that we should rely on the suggestion tool and our research methods, um, and that the list would not be subjective. Yeah, you see Dan, but it's not only Dan's picks. And the lists are actually the result of many variables. Such as? Well, I mean, for one thing, listen, the community and the suggestion tool, the Mojoholics, you guys will remain the foundation. That won't change. But like a house, you got foundation, you got the walls, you got windows, you got the roof. That's how you kind of put it all together and get an objective list. Uh, listen, if we just looked at the polls and the, the suggestion tool, you guys would accuse us of, oh my god, it's a popularity contest. If we go to the other end of the extreme and say, all right, the data is clearly skewed by like the fanboys, uh, then you would accuse us as a few emailed in saying, oh my god, you're ignoring the community. Um, but ultimately, like our traditional top 10 list, it boils down to many things. But it's all about successful. It's successful entries, successful people, successful things. Um, so again, like we do look at the content, but we also look at the views, the subscribers. And then we look at the change in views, the change in subscribers. We look at a lot of empirical things. Um, you know, it's, there's a lot that goes into it. And yes, the, op the opinion of the community counts, but it's not the only thing. Right. That makes sense. Um, but didn't the guy who topped the poll come uh, only as an HM on the list? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So a dose of Buckley, we're going to address that head on. So even when our, in our traditional top 10 list, let's say we're polling for any topic, and clearly the Mojoholics have a favorite, uh, Heath Ledger as the Joker. So if we were to do a list, and we felt in that specific list, it didn't necessarily make sense, the data didn't support it. We don't want to also just ignore what the fans want, so that's when we throw you guys like you know a hat tip and basically feature that entry as an HM. And that's the point of an HM. It's kind of objective. Honorable we, mention in case. Honorable mention, yes, inside sorry. Inside baseball terms. <laughs> but what happened here is twofold, and Adosa Buckley, and we love this, kind of complained on the, the channel and Twitter and all that, and that's fine. That's why you know it's an open you know, platform for people to chime in. So I went back and I spoke to the team and I said, no, let's go through this, what happened? So when we start our list, we email everyone when we don't really know who the top 10 are, but we have a vague idea of like who's in the top 15 or 25. We email them to say, send us, you know, hey, you should be aware of this poll, share it with your followers so we, you come on our radar, we won't lie. And two, we also ask for samples to your videos so we don't judge you based on the first clip or the last clip you did. We recognize you might have a few that stand out, fan favorites, popular, whatnot. But then once we finalize the list, and you know, like, we've always been honest with you guys, we have finalized this list, that's when we sent out the second final email to basically kind of nudge you and say, oh, by the way, we're pushing this into editing, so if you have samples you want us to look at, let us know. So we had emailed back Adosa Buckley because we were looking for specific samples to feature him as an HM. But we do realize in hindsight when he or anyone else that gets that second email and maybe doesn't make it or is on the cusp or only an HM, 
it's kind of frustrating to be like, what the hell? You guys send me something, I feature it, and I get no love. Yeah, honestly, I'm just surprised you guys have the energy and patience to read and engage with the Mojoholics and uh, the people that we feature on topics when they complain. It's not lip service. We genuinely, customer service, viewer service is very key. Without you guys, would be nothing. And I'm not alone. Uh, Kenneth KG does it. Mr. X does it. And you know what? We have members of the fellowship. We have some Mojoholics mm -hmm. who do chime in and help out moderate the, uh, the, the comment section. I want to give him a shout out, specifically the five who come to mind. Bart Woodstra, Andrew Warren, Daenerys Targaryen. I wonder if she's Armenian. I'm just kidding. Jack Morris and Tropical Remix. Oh boy. We'll be sending you guys a little treat uh, between now and the holidays just to say thank you. Who knows, some of you will get t-shirts, caps, pens. Some of you might even get the Mojo box with all that in it, which are now available in our store if you guys are interested. <laughs> Always throwing the plugs in. Um, okay, so moving along. Another thing that keeps coming up, uh, and Dan and I mentioned this in a very early What's Your Mojo, was how our musical artists lists come, to you, come together. Yeah, so, I, you know, you guys, I think, covered this when we had like a million or two subs. We're now at almost six million subs. We've done many more musical artists, so just to repeat it, our musical artists are not the best songs by that artist, and they're not the most successful ones. They're a melange of that, right? It's a bit like if a band were to do uh, a comeback, um, and they were to think of a set list, they wouldn't just go with their hidden gem, you know, their personal faves or the ones like the most hardcore fans like. And they wouldn't only do the biggest hits. They would kind of look at it as like, what is the best representative sample of our work? That would be the top 10 songs. Um, you know, oftentimes, we, earlier on, we did like the best songs that fans liked, and that raised a lot of eyebrows. You guys accused us of being hipsters. And then we've done like the most successful ones, and you guys are like, oh my god, you omitted all these other ones that most fans like and the band themselves like. So we kind of, I think, have the right balance. But again, if you're just a new subscriber becoming a Mojoholic, you might wonder, well, why didn't this or that make the list? Right. I could not be less of a hipster. Anyway, um, on... You have the beard for it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I wish I had a beard. She does not have a beard. I do not. Um, so on an earlier episode of Watch Mojo FAQ, we talked about sports clips. We finally did one. Top 10 sports that are entertaining to watch. Yeah. Would you care to comment? Just that. It was exactly as we expected. <laughs> Americans objected to soccer placing so high. They wanted American football higher. And, you know, Europeans, whatever, bashed us for other reasons. Sports are very tough. We like the abuse. We're a bunch of sadists. But, yeah, that's kind of why we avoid to doing too many sports lists because mm. it's a clear divide. Uh, overwhelmingly, people still like them, but you saw there was a lot more dislikes than usual. And, again, that doesn't make us afraid. We don't look at just what is going to get views, what is going to get likes. We like to keep it. You know, yeah, different. I was I was surprised we put hockey that high. I mean, I, lo I love hockey. Obviously. No, we love hockey. I mean, listen, I, I love both soccer, you know, football uh, and hockey to watch. Also, American football. I mean, we like them all. This was not a personal list. I think the reason why hockey actually placed as high as it did was not just that the data, which is a fancy way of saying uh, on other lists, and and it got a lot of votes, but it's because hockey is huge in Russia, in in the Scandinavian countries, in Europe, whereas like American football, by and large, is. Mm in the US, um, and soccer, again, I mean, sure, to some people it's boring, but you know what, it is also exciting to watch, especially like, you know, it's 90 minutes interrupted once by a half time, no ads in between. You gotta kind of look at, you know, peel off the layers of the onion, and when you kind of break down how that is packaged, and also, if you go to an NFL match, and this was a key thing that weighed down the NFL, a lot of folks, when we asked them, both live and on TV, the NFL, when you go, it's an experience, but when you're sitting there at the 40-yard line, you're like, what? where's the ball? What's happening? It's a very tough game to follow live, and that hurt its votes. And on TV. Anyway, um, shifting gears, I noticed a uh, comment made by Mr. X on top 10 badass movie motorcycles. See what I did there? Shifting gears. Uh, anyway, more than one person complained about torque not being on the list. So uh, what do you have to say when people wonder why something didn't make the cut? I don't and I can't comment specifically on Torque or that video. Uh, I did see that Mr. X comment. I was surprised it was in more profanities given the usual stuff he adds. But I, I will just say that if you're wondering why something doesn't make an entry because it's a fan favorite and you're like, oh my god, it's so much better. Again, it's playing, it's the objectivity, which is if it didn't get enough votes by the broader community, if it wasn't on, if the data doesn't support it, which again just means it wasn't on enough lists to merit um, an inclusion. And frankly, if there's 10 other items that are better supported statistically, we have to be objective. But again, that's why you have the honorable mentions. Um, even though there's only five honorable mentions, so things kind of are on the outside looking in. But if enough people chime in on something, that's why we do another top 10 list. It's kind of like we care about the feedback. If we miss something, we're not vain and close-minded to say, 
no, you guys are wrong. We, we make five mistakes a day, but we get 95 things probably right in the day, right? And that's just kind of, cool. it's stats. We don't control stats. Anything else? Uh, simply that we updated one of our bios. Last year, we updated Will Ferrell, uh, which we had done previously. You guys like that. This year, we did Jennifer Lawrence. Again, you guys like that. Some of you were surprised we didn't include the shots. I mean, that kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, we have, before top tens, we did a lot of bios and profiles. So we're going to have a poll in the comment section. Please let us know which actors, actresses, uh, musical artists, politicians, whatever you care about. We probably have a bio. In many cases, it's two, three years old. Uh, and we're going to aim to do that once a week, an updated bio. Alrighty. Okay, so next week we will talk about the video game series that will be launching next year, or 2015. And we will discuss what we will be planning on doing with What's Your Mojo and Watch Mojo FAQ. Tune in then. Thanks. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching and tune in tomorrow for me and Dan on What's Your Mojo.